Welcome back. Uh, now we're going to be doing an XT90, soldering an XT90. This is a female XT90 plug that I'm going to be soldering onto this uh, battery pack. Uh, with battery packs, when they don't have connectors or if you're changing connectors, um, make sure you only do one wire at a time because there is a shorting potential here if you were to have both these ends exposed. Um, when battery packs come with no connectors, they'll usually be uh, heat shrink like this or taped off. Uh, like I said, this is the female end. When I solder um, these, uh, because I'll be pumping a bit of heat into them, I like actually using a, a male end or a female end, depends which end you're doing. And that way the pins will be kept aligned. They won't move as you're heating it up. You know, these amass, good quality uh, connectors, these amass ones, you know, they use a high temperature nylon and the, uh, the likelihood of, you know, moving a pin or softening up the connector housing is pretty, uh, pretty remote, but it can happen. Oh, one other thing I should mention. XT90s, they have these um, cradle pins. There's a little kind of a half cradle in there. And... I like, you know, a lot of times these will be moved around, but you can turn these. But when I'm soldering them, I like them to be on the outside. And one, it just allows easier access and it, uh, you know, gravity, you can have gravity working with you instead of, you know, the solder, you know, spilling out. It's kind of kept in that cradle. So again, like having the open halves facing outward on either side of the plug. So we'll just plug the male end in there and we'll just mount it in this vise. You can mount it in anything but a little, you know, bench. This is just, this is a hot, this is a vise off my drill press, but you know, those little hobby vices that have the suction cups on them, whatever, whatever you might have. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is tin these little cradles. I'm just going to zoom into that. Hopefully you can see this a bit better. I'm just going to move it like so. And I'm using a heat gun, or uh, I mean not a heat gun, uh, my Weller soldering gun. Uh, you know, a little, uh, a little soldering iron, you know, depending on your wattage. Probably not going to output enough heat. This is fairly large wiring, that's why I'm using the gun, as I mentioned in that tinning video. Uh, when you're doing bigger wires, you need more heat. So we'll just fill this cradle. I fill it up about halfway with solder. This is a 6040 rosin core, good, good quality solder. So I just like filling that cradle about halfway up. Uh, we may as well do the other side while we're here. Flow right in there. Okay, so we'll do the negative side first. These are marked negative and positive. So we'll do the negative side first. So again, we'll just take the insulation off the one wire on the battery here so there's no short potential. Now, the first thing you want to do is put your heat shrink on your wiring because once it's soldered on you can't fit it afterwards. Some of mass connectors they have those little end uh, boots that can go over and you don't have to use the heat shrink but I like the ones with the heat shrink, a little less expensive. Um, heat shrink by the way it heats or it shrinks roughly twice its original diameter um, so you know wiring like this you could probably, this is 10 gauge wire but I'm using, I think this is 8 millimeter uh, heat shrink tube. Maybe a little bit too small. It's just fitting over the wire. Now, I can't stress again how important it is to have your wire ends tinned properly. Um, new batteries, they'll usually come with the ends tinned, or if you're replacing a plug, obviously the end's going to be tinned already. But you want, uh, you know, want, you want a solid tinning that goes, you know, where the solder, it's, you know, it's well, uh, well soaked into all the strands, deep into the strands, so you get a really strong mechanical joint. It's not just electrical uh, connectivity you're worried about here, it's mechanical, how strong that mechanical joint is. 
because you know this is under a lot of stress this plug a lot of times people are pulling the plugs by the wires and if you've got a good mechanical joint chances of it fatiguing and flight and cracking and giving out on you are pretty minimal so again, watch that tinning video if you're unsure how to tin. Tinning is like 75% of this. So, let's make sure our tip is clean. Very important to keep the tip clean. I'm going to add a little more solder to this wire here. And that also gives us a little um, layer of flux or rosin. We've got the heat shrink on. We're going to the negative. Just confirm all that and just apply heat. As long as you've got solder on there you've got good heat uh, migration from the tip to the wire and you'll, you'll feel the wire sink down into that cradle and then just push it forward. Hold it still as it cools. You want to see a nice silver uh, joint and now as far as the heat shrink goes inside an XT90 or an XT30, XT60 they've got these little recesses uh, beside the pin so it's nice if you can get the heat shrink over the pin and down into that recess that gives uh, lots of protection you know if your heat shrinks a little bit too big it, it won't drop down into there so you could preheat the you know you could heat the heat shrink a little bit so it shrinks if it's too big so it slides down into that little recess so you've got good uh, good insulation all the way down just another little tip but we'll do this one I'm just going to turn on my SMD rework station here um, you could use anything to heat whatever you use to heat your heat shrink or shrink your heat shrink you know a heat gun uh, if you want to use a lighter use a lighter with a flame usually the blue part of the flame is the best because it, uh, it it won't burn the heat shrink as quickly as the yellow part so I'll just slide that over there and get it deep down into the recess and I got our heat wand out from our service mount heat gun here oops sorry not in frame Sorry about that, guys. Right, just make sure it shrinks nicely. Now I'll do the other side. I'll probably just fast forward through it. Again, we'll plug the male end in. We'll turn it around. Now, another important thing here. This is where it can get dangerous. I'm going to be soldering this, uh, the positive half. And once I do that, these two are now live and do have a short potential. So, you know, if you were really concerned about that, maybe, you know, put heat shrink over one of them as you're soldering so these can't short out on your vise or whatever if, uh, you know, if you're worried about that. I'm not too concerned. Again, take off the insulation, cut it off. Make sure you've got nice, again, a nice tinned end. Clean off our solder tip on the gun. Just going to add a little to the uh, wire here. Oops, almost forgot to put the heat shrink on. Actually I'm going to I'm going to uh, use some larger heat shrink. This is 10 millimeter just to show you uh, how you could pre-shrink it so it fits into the little recess in the plug. that on first. You know, it's pretty big. It'll be interesting to see if that shrinks, but like I said, it'll shrink about half half diameter. Just wait for that to heat up. Apply heat. Again, as long as you've got solder, a little bit of solder between the tip of the gun and the device you're soldering, you'll get good heat penetration. And there the wire just sank into the cradle. Push it forward. Hold it nice and still as it cools. Now again, here's where I'll I'll just try to shrink the end a bit. So there, so there we slid it in, and now we'll shrink it the rest of the way. I gotta take this out.
And there we go. That's all there is to it. Um, just double check that you do have the positive wire to the positive pin. If you get those backwards and you hook it into the ESC, um, interesting smells and smoke usually appear. If you were doing the male end um, on your ESC, same idea. Uh, but you don't have to worry about shorting potential, of course, because these aren't live like they are in a battery. And that's the XT90. Hopefully uh, that gave you a little bit of help how to solder those. Pretty easy.